you're one of those people who left work and then came back again. I did. Well, you know, I enjoyed retirement. I did enjoy it, but I also got a wee bit bored. And, I, I, and to be honest, Kay, I always enjoyed my job. I liked most of the people I worked with, most of them. And it's, uh, <laughs> you, were, you were one of them, Kay. You were one of them. Um, but, uh, you know, it's nice just to do this, you know, this nice Pick and choose, come Absolutely. in when you fancy, yeah. Yeah, a bit of that. A, I bit know. Of that. a bit of golf as well, a bit of the gym. You know, I'm not just working, I'm having oh. fun. <laughs> Pamela, you've got it taped here, you've got it taped. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, thank bye. you. Bye, bye. It's five past ten. This is Kay Adams with you to 12 on BBC Radio Scotland. Still to come this morning. But I'm fascinated by that idea that, you know, everything's so performative, everything's a bit narcissistic, and it's you can't live like that. You can't live this perfect life that you put on Instagram. So I wanted to see what happens when these people are at home. Yeah, well, lots of people try to. Uh, that's best-selling author Jane Fallon. She's going to be talking to us about the dangers of oversharing. And... Money, money, money. We've been talking about a lot about money today. I think we've put the wind up lots of people. But don't worry, our saving surgery uh, will be opening its doors with uh, personal finance expert Fergus Muirhead here to answer any questions that you have about making the most of your money. Uh, so you can text them on 80295 or pick up the phone 08085 9295 00. Mmm, what a tan. What a tan. What a tan. Yes, yeah, slightly sleazy advert from the 80s there, but uh, our obsession with getting a tan is now beginning to uh, turn bad. Uh, the impact on skin cancer numbers is really pretty alarming. We'll be talking a little bit about that. And you fancy serving this to your wedding guests? Two hamburgers with just pickles, two cheeseburgers with another cheeseburger, everything on them. Four more hamburgers with everything, a cheeseburger with no pickles, and cheeseburger with nothing but pickles. Two more hamburgers... <laughs> Good effort there. Uh, could fast food replace a dry chicken breast at weddings? All the conversations that matter. Mornings with Kay Adams on BBC Radio Scotland. I never have the dry chicken breast because I'm vegetarian. So I have some vegetables mushed up and wrapped in pastry. That's my preference at a wedding. Thank you very much. Um, here's the... Ma
words mixed up. I do apologise to the Bengals. Fabulous song. Thank goodness we've got somebody literary to dig me out of this hole. Um, she has been described as a keen observer of modern vanities. And in her latest latest novel, uh, best-selling author Jane Fallon has social media oversharing in her sight. She's here to tell us more. Good morning, Jane. Hello. Good morning. I could see your eyebrows going up when I said, here's the Manic Mondays. I could see it. I thought, oh no, I'm rumbled. This I didn't is want to say anything. I thought, I'm going to have to confess. Usually I would just try and ignore my mistakes, but today I thought, Ugh, there you go. Um, so you have focused on overshare. You've had a fantastic run of really successful novels. I think the expression is hot button topics. And it's a real skill to identify those those talking points that, that really excellent exercise people. Why have you chosen this uh, for your latest, uh, your latest novel? Well, I've always been really interested in those Instagram influencers ever since they kind of appeared, because I do think it is a really weird way to live your life, to sort of curate your life like you're a living museum and, you know, put a version out of yourself out there that you want people to see. And then I was watching, there's an American show called The Amazing Race, which is a bit like Race Across the World. Mm -hmm. Um, and everyone competes in teams. And I was watching a series of that a couple of years ago and there was a team and they were in their late 40s and they were influencers and they've got millions of followers. And what they do is they do happy sing songy videos with their two little kids. And they showed one and it was the most horrendous thing I'd ever seen. They're all in matching pajamas and kind of singing and gurning and wiggly backsides. And, and I just thought, what are these people like when they're having a bad day? What about when they've had an argument and then they've got to go, oh, now we've got to go and do Agadoo and put it out on Instagram. And so I started thinking about that side of things, how you're living this life, you know, one life online and then your real life behind the scenes and how those two things might not match up. And well, what can, well, I say what concerns you, but I guess it's up to everyone to lead their lives however they want to. You know, some people will choose to and, and others won't. But are there things within that that concern you? either for those individuals or for kind of wider society. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you completely. It's up to everyone. But I wonder whether some of the people that rushed into it, you know, it looking like a really sort of appealing way to earn a living, whether they necessarily understood the potential mental health issues. You know, I think it is tough that you're up there for public consumption and criticism all the time. You sort of made yourself into a public commodity. So it does, it worries me a bit. It worries me sometimes for young people that go into it. I mean, I think generally people know what they're doing. And I, I think for society, it's, you know, maybe a bit alarming that we're presented with these perfect lives that no one can aspire to live because they're not real. Mm. Again, for young people more, you know, if you're young and you look on there and everyone looks perfect from the second they get up to the second they go to bed, apparently, and they're always happy, apparently. I imagine that's that can be quite hard. Mm. How do you deal with social media then? Because you're, you know, you're a well-known figure, highly successful author. People are interested in you. How do you deal with it? I try and keep mine a kind of happy place, which obviously isn't always possible. But um, I keep it books, cats, animals, generally. Um, but also my way, honestly, of dealing with it is when anyone says anything negative, which I'm lucky that I haven't had too much of, but obviously we all get some of it. I just mute them. I don't get involved in arguments. I'm not going to argue with someone I don't know about the fact they don't like the way I look or something. It's like, who cares? Mm. But I let them just keep hurling their insults into the wind and, and then I just pretend they're not there. Mm. Now, don't take this the wrong way because we're actually the same age, but do you think it's an age thing? Do you think we are just of a generation that we don't kind of get it? It's not what we grew up with and, you know, we, we just can't get our heads around it fully. Yeah, that definitely might be true. I mean, I still, I'm trying to grapple with Instagram and I don't quite get it. I also think we were lucky, though, that we didn't have our whole teenage years out there for the oh, world. Oh, yes, to too much at. buck fast. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, at age, I'm sure age is something to do with it. I'm sure for a younger generation, they just think, well, this is what life is. But, but it's a strange life either way. Mm. So, I mean, your career as a, as a writer, as I say, very successful, but you had another career before um, in, in television as, as a producer and, and script editor or script writer? Yeah, script editor, yeah. yeah. And yeah, This I Life, did. of course, which we absolutely love, Daniela Nardini, of course, a yeah. Scottish, Scottish actor in, in that. Um, what are the differences between the two careers? Uh, the main difference, I guess, is that TV is very collaborative, there's always a lot of ideas in the room and, and some that can be really healthy 
but it can also suck the life out of an idea. I think too many opinions all at once. I'm in a lovely tunnel of my own making for about eight months of the year, and that suits me so perfectly. And then when I want feedback, I've got a great editor and I'll I'll give the book to her and I'll get feedback. And it's really helpful at that point, but it really suits me to have no distractions, no interruptions along the way. Obviously, the downside of that is it's quite an insular career, but mm. I, I kind of I like working at home on my own and just doing my own thing. So it suits you as a personality. You enjoy that way of life, yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. I mean, the idea that I can work in my pajamas. Honestly, whose dream is that? Not. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's become a lot of people's reality in the last three years. That's for sure. Um, yeah. And in terms of the formulation of the ideas, um, you know, there's the writing, and I'm sure getting down to actually putting it. Well, I don't know if we put anything on paper, but you know, what I mean, um, that's one thing. That's one part of the the job. But the formulation of the ideas. Um, as I say, it was an article I was reading about you who said you were a keen observer of modern vanities, which I thought sounded pretty accurate. I mean, what are these modern vanities that you're looking into? Obviously, your current book, uh, Oversharing, is one, but where do the ideas come from? Do you sit in a cafe, you know, with sort of one eyebrow up and, a, and a, an espresso, just watching people to get the ideas? I do a bit of that. Yeah, I definitely do a bit of that. Mostly, there are things that I'll be preoccupied about that maybe I'm reading about, you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's social media, sometimes it's the things people are doing to their faces, you know, our kind of crazy quest to not age in any way, which I find absolutely bizarre. Um, you know, sometimes it will be things that, that feel quite current that are in the news that I get quite absorbed in reading. And often, though, it's talking to my friends and quizzing them about things that are going on in their lives and they will all come to me with stories of other people they know. <laughs> my friends will always ring me up and say, you'll never guess what's happened to this friend of mine. And they'll tell me some story. And that quite often sparks off an idea. Yeah. And would you ever think of doing perhaps, you know, a historical novel, something that really required a sort of a deep research or, or do you prefer to stay in the moment? I prefer to stay in the moment. I think part it's possibly partly laziness um, because obviously you've got to be incredibly... Uh, rigorous in your research if you're going to do a historical novel but also I just feel like it's my strength that's what I enjoy doing I enjoy kind of looking at the absurdities of modern life and uh commenting on them and slightly taking the mickey out of them and I think it's what I'm good at really it's, it's the kind of most of the tv I did was a similar sort of vein it was yeah. very kind of modern and so yeah I think stick to what you're good at probably yeah. Um, on our phone in this morning, we were talking about retirement and whether or not it kind of almost exists as a concept anymore. Um, you're 61. Do you think Two. about retiring? 62. Oh, 62. Um, yes. Uh, no, I'm hoping that what I do, I can just keep doing it. I can't imagine. I mean, I used to do it all the time anyway, even when I wasn't doing it professionally, if you know what I mean. I was always trying to write books. So I think I'll just keep going as long as someone wants to publish them. And then if they don't anymore, I'll just keep writing them and throw them in the bin but I don't for me there's no I don't know what I do all day really if I stop doing this yeah well I mean I guess that's the situation for a lot of people isn't it it's not so much that they don't want to retire but it's, it's what else do you do with your time and and you would have to really sit and think about that yeah yeah I would and I worry that I would become very lazy and very insular I'm not very good at kind of hobbies or joining in with things you know going out to do stuff. So I think I'd end up just sitting there doing nothing. So I'm much better off just trying to carry on doing this. Well, thankfully, you've got something that you love and that people love the product. Um, yeah, yeah. Jane, thank you very much indeed. So um, Oversharing um, is out now. And that is Jane Fallon. Thank you very much, Jane. It's the soundtrack to your parties, to your family. It's uh, 10.20. This is Kay Adams with you to 12 on BBC Radio Scotland. Coming up. Mmm, what a tan. What a tan. What a tan. Tolizing voice rising. Yeah, one of those.
those things that felt like a good idea at the time, but we'll be asking why cases of skin cancer are most prevalent in the over 55s. I think the answer to that is quite self-evident. Also, uh, would your wedding guests, uh, guests sit down to this? Two hamburgers with just pickles, two cheeseburgers with another cheeseburger, everything on them, four more hamburgers with everything, a cheeseburger with no pickles, and cheeseburger with nothing but pickles. Two more hamburgers. <laughs> well, yes, could fast food be replacing formal dining at weddings? Um, apparently, uh, the Golden Arches, you know, the one that I mean, are offering this product uh, in Asia. I think it's in Malaysia, actually, that they will supply your wedding buffet, all the fast food that your guests could possibly want. <clears throat> Not very much, thanks. for me it is um, we are talking numbers now in our savings surgery um, Fergus Muirhead let me get that right is here personal finance expert not to be confused with any other Ferguses that may be around in the news <laughs> yes another one of my I, I really must stop pointing out my mistakes this is not very wise how are you Fergus I'm very well thank you yeah. good yes I'm, I'm well I'm well um, so saving surgery today how to make the most of your money um, Fergus here to answer any questions that you have about that uh, the lines are open now 0805 92 90 uh, or you can text uh, 80295. We'll be taking calls from 11. Um, but as I say, uh, pick up the phone now if you've got something specific that you want to speak to, to Fergus uh, about. A um, lot of chat at the moment, Fergus, about um, well, interest rates in general.